has several women scientists who their fictional uh, science inspiration is. And this could be a character from a book, a TV show, um, or a movie. Ooh. Um, that inspired them uh, to uh, learn more about science and even potentially to pursue a career in science. When I was a kid, I used to love to read. I mean, I still do, but when I was a kid, I read all the time. And one of my favorite books was A Ring of Endless Light by Madeline Lingle. And the main character, her father was a marine biologist and a lot of his colleagues then were marine biologists. And I think it was through that character and that the fictional community of marine biologists that I started to get into marine biology at all. So I think those, those sets of characters were probably some of my first early science inspirations. My fictional science hero would have to be the incredible, the fantastic educator, Ms. Frizzle from the Magic School Bus because she encouraged her students to get messy. And that is what being a field biologist is all about. Miss Frizzle showing her kids all the cool things about the world and about nature and earth was awesome. There are several ways to find out the answer to that and I choose this one. Yeehaw! She's lost it. So I would say for sure, by far, Miss Frizzle was my uh, fictional science hero. My fictional science hero growing up was uh, Dr. Dana Scully from The X-Files. She was very logical and skeptical, but at the same time, surprisingly open-minded um, to all of the crazy things that happened uh, on The X-Files. And I thought that that was a pretty good representation of um, what a scientist should be. And if I were a scientist, that's the kind of scientist I'd want to be as well. Why Dana Scully? Um, I really liked her kind of badass attitude and also her way of solving problems from a very scientific and skeptical point of view. That said, I also have a bit of Mulder in me uh, just because I was on Mulder's side in terms of believing in extraterrestrial beings and it's probably one of the reasons why I wanted to do astrophysics in the first place. Um, and yeah, that was a really, really inspiration this show for, for me. I have always been inspired by fictional characters who love knowledge and love learning, which I think is sort of a kind of scientist. So people like Miss Frizzle and Matilda were always characters that I loved as a child. Um, but I think the one who actually probably most turned me into the scientist that I am is a character named Cassie from the Animorphs series, which is a series of books where kids could touch animals and then turn into them. And they sort of had this understanding of animals. They were fighting space aliens also. Um, but Cassie was the one whose parents were vets and was sort of more thoughtful and more scientific. And I just loved learning about animals through learning about another person. Um, this was a hard question for me. I don't really remember a lot about me growing up, growing up and, um, thinking about scientists or science too much. But I do remember there was a TV show, like a cartoon called uh, Captain Planet and the Planeteers. And I really liked that, that show. Captain Planet was fighting against pollution. I always loved nature. So I think that's what I, I like about the, that show. And yeah, well, maybe Captain Planet was my fictional science hero. So sadly, I didn't have a lot of fictional science heroes as a kid. But if I really dig deep, I would say that I loved Indiana Jones. And he was an archaeologist, so it wasn't in the natural sciences, which I ended up studying, um, like biology and ecology. But I just loved, you know, this idea of going out into the world and studying old cultures um, and exploring and traveling. So. If I had to pick one, Indiana Jones would be my fictional science hero. This is so um, easy. It is Dr. Alan Grant from Jurassic Park, the book and the movie. Um, 
Um, and why is because he is about that life. Like he lives for his science. He loves his work. Um, he's deeply into the theory of his work, you know, digging up the dinosaur bones and thinking about what the bones and things mean and what you can infer about um, how dinosaurs lived. But when it comes down to it, he can take all that theoretical knowledge and apply it so people don't die. 